This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. You change your mind and other people change your mind for you. So we need to talk about making changes to task entries. In my project, I have what I think is how I want my web video to shoot. I think I have everything in the proper order. I, I think everything is good. And then someone comes along and says, oh no, we have to change something. And they say, hold auditions. That won't work, Sherry, because we have to allow people to come in before work, after work, da da da. And they say, we need at least four days. We have to have at least four days for auditions because we don't want to make anybody upset that we aren't giving them enough time to come in and audition for this project. So there are a couple of ways that you can make changes. Let's talk about what I call the universal change opportunity. When you double click on a task, it opens up the task information dialog box. Let me click on close here. If you're not a double clicker, you can also get that from the ribbon. So click on the task tab. And at the end of the task tab here in properties, you have the information dialog box or shift F2 will get you the same option. This is everything. This is everything you can change about that particular task. So you can come in here and you can make those changes. So the duration, I have these little um, spinners is what they're called. They have the little spinners and I can actually spin up and then that way I don't change the days. And by the way, I have D for days, but you can also, if you're using the American standards, you can also use M for minutes, H for hours, W for weeks, and MO for months. And if you forget that, remember help will give you a listing of all those items. And so I could change this to say four days. And then I'm thinking, really, four days? I don't think so. So I want to remind myself to come back and check on this. So I'll check estimated, and I'll say, OK. Now my project, of course, changes because my duration changed for that task item. So it's going to push out the end of my project. And now I'm realizing, oh, hey, look at this. I don't have, I have my start dates and my finish dates, but I have my start dates and my finish dates for each element for each segment of this project, phases, they're often called in project management terminology. But do you know what I forgot? I don't have a task for the entire project. I don't have one that says, oh, and hey, this is what the entire project, the duration will be for this web video shoot project. So I, I've decided I need to simply add a new task in here. Well, before I add the new task, I want to remind you why the question mark is here is because we just said, we think four days, we're not sure. So the question mark allows you to come back, check on it, or just to say, I, really, I don't know. And that could be a visual for anyone. Well, if I want to insert a task, I'll just right click and I'll do insert task. That's one way to do it. Or hit the insert key on your keyboard. Well, let me hit insert quickly. Notice the difference in a second. Right now, you can, all you can see is that I have a blank line that inserts. Well, I also want to show you how to delete because some of your changes for your tasks might be to delete a task. And so if you have a row, let me deselect so you know that they're totally separate occurrences. If you have a row or a task selected and on your keyboard, you hit your delete key on your keyboard, did you notice that it just went away? And it'll do that even if they're typing on the line. So be aware that you can accidentally delete things just by hitting the delete key on your keyboard if the entire task is selected. Okay, now here's the difference. This time I'm right clicking and choosing specifically insert task. And you see the delete before I hit insert? Okay, so insert task. And here's the difference. Now it understands that this line is actually going to be a task. So I have all the proper formatting and everything on the line associated with it being a task. So there's a, there's a big difference between just hitting your insert key and right clicking and choosing insert task. So what is my new task? My new task is simply my summary line. And so I'm going to call this web, whoops, web video shoot project. And I'm not going to change the day at all because I, what I want to do here is not to turn this into a task. I don't want my first row or my first task item to actually be a task. I want it to be the summary for the entire project. And I just realized I forgot to include that. 
So because I put it in as a task and it's behaving as a task, when I indent all of the lines below it, it's going to automatically create this as the summary line. So right now it tells me my start date for my project is January 2nd, 2015, and my finish date is also January 2nd, 2015. Well, that's not true. So let's see how to fix this. If your project is lengthy, collapse your phases. And if you collapse your phases, you'll be able to select more effectively. Because mine was short enough, I simply could have done this, click and drag to the end of my project. But some projects are quite lengthy. So collapse when you can, make it easier on yourself. But basically, I'm selecting the entire project, and I'm double clicking my task tab to make my ribbon stick, and I want the indent task. So I'll just click on indent task, check out what happens. So let me get that ribbon out of the way. So now I have a summary line. My web video shoot project, that task line is now a summary line. 15 days, because remember I have, let me drop this down, in pre-production I have a task that I said was an estimate, and so the estimate flows through up here to the first line with the question mark. And now I have the start and finish for my entire project the entire project. So now I know I start on January 2nd and I finish, based on the way my project is currently laid out, I finish on January 22nd. So that's another option when you're in there correcting things. Be aware though that it makes a difference between the insert key on the keyboard or the right click and insert task. They behave differently. And then to delete, you can, I, and all I did there to delete is get my little thick black arrow, click, hold, and drag for both of those rows. You can either hit the delete on your keyboard, or you can right click and choose delete tasks, whatever is more comfortable for you. Well, what if you're typing? So when I'm typing, what if I wanted to type this four days with a question mark? For instance, rehearsals, I really think we might need two days to rehearse. So you can click here and type two you can have the question mark placed in here, to question mark, and then it will automatically add the question mark in. So you don't actually have to go into that uh, task information dialog box to make your changes. You can make your changes directly on the screen. Now, are you noticing a few things happening here? One thing is the dates, of course, are changing. The question marks are being added because I'm putting in estimates. But are you also noticing color changes? Just then, when I change to two days, it said, well, these things have been changed. They're color-coded. It's not really bright, but it's on my screen, it's like a light blue color. It's identifying for me the changes I've been making in my project. So I can see what's changing based on the changes that I've asked for. OK, let's drop down pre-production, I mean collapse pre-production, and see that as soon as I do something, then those highlights disappear. So the highlights are there long enough for you after you've made your change for you to identify what changes you actually want to make. All right, I get, I get the scoop and I find out, you know, Sherry, we'll be okay. If you offer two full days of auditions, we can do that. So I say, all right, so that one's two and rehearsing, yes, we're going to spend two days rehearsing. Okay, we can do that. So now I've said this is pretty much what I think my project's going to be, no more question marks. But remember, the question marks are, are handy. They do come in very, very handy. Last thing I want to talk about here, start dates and finish dates. And in my opinion, this is probably the biggest tip you can take from any course that you ever, ever, ever take on project, whether it's beginning, intermediate, advanced, super advanced. Here's, here is the number one tip. Are you ready for it? The number one tip is don't change your start and finish dates manually. Why? Because remember, over here, I have my project set up to automatically schedule the tasks. If I come in here, I want to save my project before I do this. Remember undo, right? Undo and redo. So as soon as I hit save, my undo and redo disappear. So I cleared out the undo and the redo history, but I just saved my project. Now watch what happens. Remember when I was um, holding auditions and I said, well, you know, maybe that's going to be a four-day task. So if instead of changing this to say four days, I came into the date and I said, okay, Tuesday, mm, let's give this until Friday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that would be six, seven, eight, that would be January 9th. And so I come in here. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? There we go. I couldn't get it. January 9th, 2015. Now, I just manual, oh, look at that. My computer's going crazy. See the, the exclamation point flashing? I think that's just a 
a little glitch. I'm not sure it actually always flashes like that, but I love it because it's warning you, big warning, big warning, big warning. I just changed everything beyond this, but here's what I just did to this cell on my project and this entire project line. I just said it doesn't matter what you do to the rest of the project, this project line must finish on January 9th. So now you have to remember that. You have to remember that throughout the duration of your project that this particular project line, hold auditions, you told it to stop on January 9th. Now the, the exclamation point. It says, what do you want to do here? Do you want to keep the constraints so this task will finish no earlier than January 9th or remove the constraints so project can schedule this task? See, it's even warning you, I'm really not sure you want to do that. Because if I changed, if someone came in and said, hey, Sherry, we can start this project a lot earlier. Let's start it in December. And I change my project start date to a December date. This one's written in stone. It says, no, no, we can't hold auditions. We can't finish auditions until January 9th. Now, sometimes there are reasons for that because you have some sort of a, um, an issue that cannot be modified, for instance, a company I was recently working for, the CEO was shared between two different locations. And so sometimes the CEO would be in Seattle and sometimes the CEO would be in New York City. And that's a gigantic difference. And so if we had to hold auditions based on when the CEO was in the office, we'd have to be sure we created it on a date when we know the CEO is there. So there could be times for this, but I'm going to say, ooh, don't do that. Oh, before I do this, I just wanted you to notice, undo you can undo that task. So I'm going to say, no, remove that constraint. Put it back. So my number one tip is, if you are letting project automatically calculate the dates for you, don't ever touch your start and finish dates manually. Don't ever manually change a start and finish date. What you're going to change is the duration. And then you're going to let project calculate the dates for you. That's my number one tip. So go out, proofread, make sure you have all your spelling correct because of course there are spelling issues in here when you're changing information. But mostly I wanted to talk about durations and identify how durations can be changed because that is probably the number one item in a project is that we change our mind about how long a task will take and how to insert tasks and delete tasks because oftentimes we've forgotten something or oops, Luckily, we don't have to do that step and we can delete it. So appropriately change your data inside of your project and you are going to have a fantastic project. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.